Welcome to Fantastic Vision. Please subscribe us before you watch today's video. After Harbin Institute of Technology made new progress in EUV light source technology, Lawrence Livermore National Laboratory in the United States also reported that they have developed a new gadget called a large aperture thulium abat laser. This thing is mainly to pave the way for the future of extreme ultraviolet EUV lithography technology, hoping to promote its continued development. The efficiency of this laser is said to be 10 times that of the carbon dioxide laser used in the EUV lithography machine currently produced by ASML, and it may replace the carbon dioxide laser in the lithography system one day in the future. ASML is the only manufacturer in the world that can provide EUV lithography machines, and they hold the most critical technology of EUV equipment. Speaking of the origin of EUV technology, we have to go back to the United States. There is a technology alliance called EUV LLC, which started this first. The EUV LLC alliance is a project vigorously promoted by the US government, led by Intel. It brings together the top scientific research units and engineering teams in the United States and also involves related companies in some other countries. Everyone is working together to solve the technical difficulties of using EUV light sources to make chips and strive to make the chip market develop faster than Moore's law. The technical research and development task of EUV light sources fell on the shoulders of the American company Siemens and the German company TRUMPF. Siemens is mainly responsible for building the theoretical framework of EUV technology and setting the performance indicators of related equipment. As for the lasers that produce EUV light, it all depends on the German company. Compared with the previous DUV technology, EUV technology is simply a major renovation which redefines the entire technology circle. EUV light is actually a soft X-ray, and its wavelength will not shorten because of any medium. On the contrary, this wavelength will not only not shorten, but will be absorbed by the medium. If the light undergoes many refractions, the energy of EUV will drop significantly, and it will not be able to meet the needs of exposing wafers. We have to build a super powerful laser transmitter that can send EUV light like a bullet, whizzing out at a speed of 200 miles per hour in a vacuum. Moreover, it has to accurately shoot out a super small solder ball, the diameter of which is only 1 30 millionth. Next, we have to shine the laser twice, the first time to heat the solder ball, and the second time to directly blast the solder ball into ultra-high temperature plasma, the temperature can soar to 500,000 degrees Celsius, hotter than the surface of the sun. Next, the blasting step is repeated 50,000 times per second until the EUV light produced at last can be used in the chip manufacturing machine. The EUV laser emitter, Shiming and Trump worked together for a full 10 years before finally getting it done. The start of China's EUV technology can be traced back to almost 20 years ago, when Changchun Institute of Optics, Fine Mechanics, and Harbin Institute of Technology took the lead and were the main technical research and development forces. In 2002, Changchun Institute of Optics, Fine Mechanics and Harbin Institute of Technology developed our country's first set of equipment based on EUV lithography principles, which can be regarded as connecting EUV technology from theory to practice. In 2017, the Changchun Institute of Optics, Fine Mechanics and Physics was very powerful. They drew a pattern with a line spacing of only 32 nanometers. Moreover, as early as 2015, they had already mastered the ultra-precise, curved reflector system in the EUV lithography machine. The coating surface error of that system is extremely small, only less than 0.1 nanometers, which fully meets the requirements of EUV-level lithography machines. In 2021, Beijing Zhongke Kamei Company under the Chinese Academy of Sciences developed a super-powerful coating equipment. This equipment can accurately control the coating to 0.1 nanometers, including linear Lao lens coating machines and nanofocusing mirror coating machines. 
In this way, the technical difficulties of the parts required by the Changchun Institute of Optics, Fine Mechanics, and Physics have been solved. As a result, our country can also make the ultra-high precision curved reflector system used in EUV level lithography machines by itself, all of which are domestically produced. Harbin Institute of Technology mainly studies the first generation of capillary discharge DPP technology, which is the discharge plasma technology. The lithography light source they developed uses electric energy to directly excite plasma thereby emitting 13.5 nanometer extreme ultraviolet light. Changchun Institute of Optics, Fine Mechanics and Physics not only studies EUV light sources, but also is responsible for a series of other key technologies. For example, in addition to EUV light sources, there is also super polishing technology, which is the kind of technology that can make the surface super smooth. There are also EUV multilayer films and various technologies related to EUV imaging. These are their work focuses. Harbin Institute of Technology's main technology is DPP, which skips the step of laser generation, making energy consumption less and energy conversion more efficient. In addition, this technology also makes us no longer so dependent on those high-precision lasers and imported FPGA chips so the cost of production and manufacturing has been reduced. LPP technology is now the main method in the EUV solution. After decades of polishing, it has a very mature system. There are fundamental differences between DPP and LPP. DPP relies on discharge to turn loads such as XE or SN into plasma and then emit ultraviolet rays. Then use a multilayer reflector to repeatedly shine these lights, pick out the clean energy spectrum, and finally get 13.5 nanometers extreme ultraviolet light. LPP, which is what we just talked about, uses a very strong laser to irradiate metals such as tin. The free electrons in the tin will absorb the energy of these lasers, and then begin to vibrate in the metal, just like dancing. In this way, the original connection of the metal tin is broken and it becomes plasma. This plasma is very powerful and can meet the standards required by EUV. Earlier, Philips Extreme UV used DPP technology on the prototype of ASML's newly launched NXE 3100 series machine. However, later, LPP technology emerged and surpassed DPP in light source conversion efficiency so LPP technology became the benchmark in the industry. But this does not mean that DPP technology has no benefits. It is actually quite simple, inexpensive to make, and can convert energy very well. A few years ago, Ushio used Xtreme's DPP technology to develop the Tin Phoenix series of inspection lamps. This lamp has been used in mask inspection since 2019. In 2024, colleges and research institutes in Heilongjiang province held a competition for the transformation of scientific and technological innovation results for employees. Harbin Institute of Technology successfully won the championship with their newly developed DPP EUV technology. Their new technology cleverly avoided the LPP EUV technical obstacles promoted by ASML and provided important technical support for our domestic EUV lithography machines. U.S. Elimination Tactics The Lawrence Livermore National Laboratory in the United States, that is, LLNL, has developed a laser called BAT. The laser uses a very advanced material called thulium-doped lithium-yttrium fluoride. It sounds complicated, but in simple terms, it can make the laser stronger. It is said that this laser can suddenly emit ultra-short and ultra-strong laser pulses, with energy as high as petawatt level and average power of several hundred kilowatts. This performance directly surpasses similar lasers on the market. Compared with the EUV machines currently produced by ASML, the BAT laser is much more powerful, ten times more powerful than the EUV equipment. With a high light source power, things can be produced much faster. 
Speaking of the current EUV laser, it is really a power tiger, and it consumes a lot of electricity. Moreover, the EUV lithography machine has to work under high intensity exposure all the time, so that the electricity is used up faster. However, the BAT laser has innovated the design framework and the materials used. Once used, it can greatly reduce the power consumption of the product and make the work efficiency soar. BAT can generate pulse trains at an ultra-high repetition rate. The light conversion efficiency of this new technology is as high as 19%, which is considered to have created a new technological height. The wavelength of the current EUV laser is set to 10 microns. In contrast, the operating wavelength of the BAT laser is shorter, only 2 microns. From a hardware perspective, the BAT laser has a unique advantage. In addition, the EUV system is really power-hungry. The EUV lithography machine, with low numerical aperture, can consume up to 1,170 kilowatts, while the one with high numerical aperture is even more exaggerated, 1,400 kilowatts. Let's assume that if the power of an electric heater is 2,000 watts, then the power consumption of the EUV lithography machine is almost the same as that of 700 electric heaters running at the same time. One challenge brought by high-energy operation is how to cool down. EUV equipment must rely on huge laser equipment and refrigeration equipment to ensure that it can continuously emit high-intensity laser pulses. The diode-pumped solid-state technology used in the BAT laser performs better in electrical efficiency and thermal management than the popular EUV laser. However, the BAT technology, like the previous immersion technology replaced by EUV, has to completely overturn the old technology system and start over. Now, BAT technology can no longer keep up with the market, so everyone in the market is more optimistic about EUV technology. Although current technology still has some problems in terms of power consumption and heat dissipation, EUV technology is now the only way to manufacture chips of 7 nanometers or even smaller.